Final question close to ICAST members' hearts, and it comes from George Littlejohn. Where's your question, please? Thanks, Kirsty. Um, Greg spoke about mis-selling. Um, Stuart touched on quality of advice. Kirsty, you mentioned the Lamborghini issue. Uh, unlike lawyers and doctors, anyone can call himself or herself an accountant. I'm not a member of ICAST, so I can ask this independently. There are, for instance, tens of thousands of people out there calling themselves tax advisors who don't need a qualification, who are not regulated, who are not subject to any of the ethical codes that John Kerr referred to earlier. Do the, do the panellists think this is wrong? And if you do think it's wrong, do you plan to do anything about it? Thank Going you. from right to left. David. Uh, I think it's a really knotty issue because it begs the question as to who exactly should uh, regulated, the, the, regulate uh, accountants and tax advisors. Uh, very often there are people who maybe have spent a lifetime working for HMRC and then become tax advisors. They might not be qualified accountants, but they know the tax system uh, back to front and are perfectly uh, well qualified to advise people on tax matters. I think the, um, the challenge here is that, uh, for example, HMRC uh, very often look at the idea of kind of accredited tax advisors, but I don't think anybody, including HMRC, wants HMRC to be regulating uh, the tax profession. Uh, so I, I, I take I take the point. I can see the argument for wanting to protect consumers, but I think it's a really it's a really knotty problem in identifying exactly who would do it and who would you would exclude and uh, and, and what the sanctions would be. So I think it's it's, it, it's something worth thinking about, but I think it's quite hard to address. Stuart. I was gobsmacked when uh, ICAST told me this. I thought if you were an accountant, you had to be a qualified accountant. Uh, and quite amazed that anyone, perhaps not even with a, you know, a bookkeeping qualification, can say they're an accountant. So notwithstanding that it's a naughty issue and there are complexities, particularly in what a tax advisor might be, uh, I have to say yes. I mean, if I went to a doctor, I'd expect him to be a proper GP or a surgeon. If I go to an accountant, I would expect a similar qualification. So how it comes about, not sure. But having heard what I've heard, absolutely, I think this needs to be addressed. The regulations that are kite marked of different tax advisors, so you kite marks, and, it, and it's overseen by you know, an ICAS exam or something. Well, there's all sorts of ways of doing it. I mean, there's royal colleges yeah. in some professions. There are other uh, institutes in uh, other professions. Uh, I simply think however it's done, whatever the route, it simply needs to be achieved. Greg, the very same thing that you were saying early on, that people don't understand that they can go to tax advisors or financial advisors, and so therefore if you get a lot of fly-by-night people, then there's a real problem for people coming out because they have to make more personal decisions going forward, their own decisions, I mean. Yeah, I wasn't aware of this either, actually. It's, it's really striking. I mean, I grew up in a household where, where CAs were very, very well thought of. I mean, no one in my family was a CA, but they did think very, they did think very, I'm not going to say that, but that's why. Um, thought, very, very, thought very well of chartered accountants, and I wasn't aware of, aware of, of this. Thinking about it, as Kirsty says, given that there's an increasing emphasis on people making their own decisions, you can see how this has become a bigger issue. Um, more widely, part of the solution might be, and I'm sure ICAS is already undertaking this kind of work, to promote the brand of the chartered accountant. Mm -hmm. So people understand that actually, because certainly in Scotland, people do speak yeah, about CA still, yeah. that actually there's a difference between a chartered accountant and, and, and these other, and, and these other um, services being offered. So I think it's, it's one which politicians will have to begin to look at more seriously. Steve Webb. I think like a number of us, it wasn't an issue that's been raised with us before, so thank you for that. I won't, on that basis, make policy up on the hoof, um, tempting though it is. Um, say, save, save to say one thing, the fundamental principle for me has got to be that people are what they are advertised to be. Yeah. So you've got to know that if they're claiming expertise, they've got it. You've got to know what redress or no redress, which I think is one of your points, is available. Uh, and certainly whether it's a, a trace descriptions thing, whether it's an FCA issue, making sure that people are getting what they think they are getting is crucial. Thank you all very much indeed. And now it's time to hand over again to Anton Kalela. Thank you very much, Kirsty, and thank you very much, panel. I too like David Gock. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to tweet that during the event this morning, but in a spirit of political neutrality, I also like Stuart, Greg, <laughs> and Steve. And ladies and gentlemen, I will leave you to judge how they have performed this morning. It's been pleasing that we've been able to air the key points of the ICAST manifesto, which I hope you will take away this morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the panel masterfully chaired by Kirsty. Thank you very much indeed.